uh, we, we're doing the Parsha of Pikudei. Last week you missed a fantastic uh, Ramban. Right. Nisa Olibo. Yeah. Fantastic. I've been telling my nurses about it. I've been telling my patients about it. Yeah. yeah I was telling week, my, I told my people, people. Yeah, also. <laughs> and the reason f I'm telling people is because it's a secret of life. It's not just... Uh, it's, it's How does a person get the oomph to do something that he couldn't possibly imagine yeah. to do. You know what I mean? It's a fantastic thing. Anyway, yeah. you should read the Ramban on Nisa'o Libo. Kol Asher Nisa'o Libo. It's the first Ramban. I, we, we will not do it today, of course. But Nisa'o Libo is... Yeah, um, uh, Tav Kuf Chaf Chet. Pasuk Chaf Aleph in that parak. Pasuk Chaf Aleph. Yeah, yeah, the first one. I, no. Yeah? Oh. Well, Ein Tav Kuf. Tav Kuf Chaf Chet. Chaf Chet. Slicha. Chaf Chet. 35, 21. Pasuk, yeah. 36, 21. 35, 25, 25, 25. 21. 35, 21. Tav Kuf Chav Chet, you see? Kav Chet, Chav Chet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kol Asher Nisa'o Libo, Vayavo Kol Ish Asher Nisa'o Libo, Chav Alef. Yeah. That is not too big, but it's stupendous, gigantic. Sometimes small things can be very big. Yeah, some big meaning. So now... And last week, uh, we could have done some others, but then the Pekude. What is the special nature of Bitzalel in the making of Mishkan? One topic. Uh, what is the service in doing, in making the Kalim? The service of God in the making of the Kalim. I'm not sure what, uh, how profound that could be. I don't know. Uh, the time of the, the event of the completion of the Mishkan and the Shekhinah coming down to it. That sounds pretty dramatic, mm -hmm. right? Pasuk Beit. Kavod Hashem Meshemileyet HaMishkan. The, the, you know, the, the, the honor of Hashem that filled the Mishkan. Did we do that last time? Well, we read something, but no, in the, this particular. Okay, I, I don't know. Well, we I don't know, we might have. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there was a dispute about how Moshe stood outside, didn't stand outside. I think we did a little mm -hmm. bit. But the one about Hashrat Shechina and the Gemara, the Gemara of the Mishkan is Perik Mem Pasuk Beit. Do you want to do that? And then, is there any more? That's it for this Pasha. So it's Perik Mem 42. Chapter 40, Pasuk 2. And if we can read, yes, the, read the text of the Holy Book... I was thinking that we are going to get today. The first day of the first month shall do set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. Is that is that the one we're talking about? Yeah. Okay. So, it's Pasperic Mem. Yeah. Pasuk what? Pasuk Where is it? Oh, here it is. Yeah. By the way, I'm Hashem and Moshe Lemor. Bayom Bayom Hakodesh Arishon in the day of the first month. That means I don't know why, why he has to say Bayom. Right. Because you say on the first of the month. Right? Takim et Mishkan Ohel Moed. You shall construct, you shall erect. The Mishkan of the Tent of Meeting. Right? And then he gives them the instructions about what to put into it. And put a curtain in the front of the opening. And then put the external Mizbeach of the Ola in front of the opening. And then the laver, the, the, the washing basin. Um, uh, the Kiyor? Yeah. Um, 
between the tent of meeting and the Mizbeach and put water into it and then put the chatzer around it and the curtain and then do the the anointing with the Shemana Mishcha. Okay, so it's interesting the order in which he is to put things in. Right? First the Aron, then the Shulchan, then the Menorah, then the Mizbeach HaZahav, then the Mizbeach HaChitzon. Okay, fine. For now. But the, the thing that's interesting to Ramban is the first, is the second Pasuk, which says, In the day of the first month, in the first day of the month, you shall erect the Mishkan Oil Moed. Okay? So... <coughs> You will see there's a problem in the dates. So, Biyom HaChadosh HaRishon, yeah. Al Da'at Rabotenu, which in the footnote there says, in the beginning of Parshat Shmini. Shalosh Shemini. V'chein b'midbar Raba, nimtzeinu l'meidim she'becho b'chav gimel be'adar, hitchilu yemei ha'miluim. Aha, in fact, it's my mother's yurt site. So, uh, in, on the 23rd, that is, of the Adar Beit, of course. But we learn in that oh, those other partials, according to many, according to rabbis in the Gemara and in the Mepharshim, they say that the beginning of the eight days of um, consecration of the Mishkan, you know, there were, it, it wasn't done like the first day. He mm-hmm. told them to do this, and then he put it together... And he took it apart and put it together and did it apart and brought certain sacrifices eight days in a row. On the eighth day was the day when the Shekhinah came down. Okay, which was that day? So many Mepharshim say that that day was the first day of the month of this first day of the year. Tishrei. Mm-hmm. Or was it, or oh, was it Nisan? Uh, Nisan, Nisan, right? Yeah. First day. First day of the first month is Nisan, Nisan. right? So on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, if that's when the Shekhinah came, and that's the eighth day from the beginning of the time that he started the practice, you know, the, 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 uh, the uh, taking down and putting up, then that means you count backwards seven days before the first day of the month, and the 23rd of the month is the, is the beginning of the Miluim, of the training exercise, the whatever, right? Now what's the purpose of those eight days? I don't know yet, maybe he'll discuss it, but... So, right? So the Mishkan itself. So when God says to him, I want you to erect the Mishkan on the first day of the first month, that means that's the final erecting. Because before that, he was erecting it and taking it down, erecting it and taking it down. So that wasn't what God is talking about. He's talking about the final erecting, right? So let's go on for that. So okay, that's one opinion of the rabbis. To, to put us aside and uh, in, in this the next morning, the next put morning, put it up again. Okay. No. It's mysterious, right? Yeah, mysterious. Practice. So he says like this. So he, he says, it's Shehu Yom Shmini Lamiluim. According to the rabbis, this day that God is talking about, the first day of the month, of the first month, is the eighth day of the practice. He did this in order to let the, since, you know, once the Shekhinah comes down, you can't make any mistakes, it has to be done right, right, every day. So he wanted to do this exercise with the Levium, to be able to learn the manner in which you put together the Mishkan. So he did that seven days in a row, and then the eighth day we did it again, and that's going to be the final one when God will enter, enter with the Shekhinah into the Mishkan. Okay? Uberosh Chodesh Nisan, Shehu Hashmini Lamaim, Tzivahu, Hashem, Shia Kimenu Velo Yeredenu Ot. Good. But that's the commandment as the last one. Okay? That he should put it up and not to take it down again until God tells them to travel. Okay. Tam HaKatuv Shetakim Ata Mishkan V'Yameid the Amod Cain, Lo Tariden Velota Kemeno Od. So that the understanding of this Pasuk, when God says, on this first day of the first month, put up the Mishkan, he meant the final putting up when it will stay that way. Okay. Keeping so a machanot, Halvim Yuridu. Travel. 
until they travel. That's what's going on. Because when they start traveling, the, the camps would travel, the Levium would take it down. And they will erect it again. And then it would not be necessary to command and God did not command him to do the seven earlier days to practice. Because he already told him earlier, which is Pasuk 41, in Imperek Chavav, Pasuk Lamed, 26.30, that he should put up the Mishkan in the manner in which he was taught. Right? He was shown in the mountain. Since he now told him that this time the erecting on the first day of the month will be the one which will let it stand, that's an interesting... I don't know that you can prove it that way, right? That's the That was only right. happened to the priests and the Levim, and what happened with the rest of the people? The people didn't put up the Mishkan. So they were only... They did the work. They did the work the to erect Levim, Levim working and, on, and, on and the, in the area. Right. The rest of the people was doing whatever they were doing, right? They were, or they were changing were, diapers, they were uh, feeding something. their sheep. Going the internet and chat. The yeah. internet, yeah. chat groups, yeah. So therefore, since Moshe was doing it, that way the Levim would watch him, see how it's done, and that's the way they would do it. Oh, What do you mean by that? Oto yom nital eser atarot. Natal eser atarot. <coughs> I don't get it, exactly what he means by that, that Moshe derived crowns, special crowning from this work that he did, um, that he got special gifts from the seven days that he did it, and then additional, again, from the last day that he did it. I, I don't understand what's being said. By the way, this is the Sifra, Moshe Mahamid, and so on. Yeah, the Sifra. That the way they, they picture it is that in the previous seven days, he did that in the very early morning. He erected it. And it stood all day. all day. And the whole alayla, and the whole night. I thought it would take it down at night. No, all night it stood. And at dawn, he, Moshe, would come. He would disassemble it. And he would then put it up right away. Okay, so he didn't take it down in the evening and let it sit till the morning, but he left it completely. Then in the morning, early morning, he took it down and put it up right away. Well, of course, if you're going to let people exercise and practice, they would stand there watching him, take it down and put it up, and then leave it alone for the whole day, and then come around again. Key. Now, I don't know, if is that better educational? If we're talking only for the purpose of educating the Levi'im, is it better to teach somebody by going every day Come and see me do it. I'll take it down and put it up. And then come 24 hours later and I'll do it again. 24 hours later I'll do it again. Seven times. Or is it equally good or better or worse? If you say, okay, come to me on Sunday and I'm going to put it up and put it down and put it up and put it down seven times for you to watch me. Which way does a person or a person learn better? Let's say if we're talking only about the learning for the Levium so they will know. What do you think? What's educationally more potent? Maybe, maybe it's better that you have it 24 hours in between because they go home and they review in their mind. They review yeah. in their mind. They picture it a little bit. You know, they wonder if they have any questions because I wasn't clear exactly. You know, if it's done fast, one up and down, up and down, and up and down, you might miss something and then you don't get a chance. But 
you think about it, the next day you come and I, oh, I better watch now because I don't remember exactly how that was done. You know what I mean? And when they're reviewing in their minds. So maybe there is a logic, just utility, right? That it's useful to have it 24 hours apart. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe review. A review after a break might be better than a repeat right away. Again and again. I don't know, we'd have a daf yomi. This isn't, ob it isn't obvious that the... Uh, it isn't obvious that that's the purpose. Right. Oh, but, oh, but, oh, oh, but he said that the whole purpose was that the Levitim yeah. should see and do, mm -hmm. so I'm just wondering. Okay, fine. Yeah, I mean, but he let it stand all day long. Early morning he came, put it down, and put it up again. Key. Hakatuv amar. Upetach or moed teshvu yomam valayla. Oh. That's interesting. Because... When the seven, the eight days were commanded, Moshe told the Levim, you shall stay in the, at the opening of Oel Moed day and night during this coming eight days. Ve'en petach la'ohel, and there's no such thing as an opening to the ohel that you took down. Arak ve'et agamato, only while it's standing. So if I tell you, stand at the doorway for seven days, 24 hours a day, well, then it's impossible for me to take it down in the evening and leave it off for the night if I tell you to stay 24 hours a day mm -hmm. at the opening of the Mishkan. So that means the Mishkan has to stand the whole time. So how do you have it stand the whole time and take it apart and put it up again? Well, you got to do 24 hours, and after 24 hours, take it down and put it up right away. Right? There's, no, there's no break in between mm -hmm. when the Mishkan is not up. Some, uh, there is some well, so the break is momentary. I guess that's enough. That's satisfactory, right? Or they would stand in the place of the opening. Okay. So therefore, You know, while the, do while the doorway is open, not when it's taken apart. That's why they were commanded, so it had to be done this way. Vamru. Sheshachatan oshlamim, sheshachatan kodem shiniftechu glatot haichal psulim. So let's say there are sacrifices that they brought every day. By the way, okay. Actually, I think he did. But it is known, forty-seven. It is known in Zvachim in the Gemara that if you slaughter one of the sacrifices, shlamim, that you slaughter it before the doorpost, the doorway is open to the Mishkan, or the Beit HaMikdash, they are not acceptable, right? Because you must sacrifice them at the opening of Oel At the time it's open and not when it's locked. Right? Therefore, you know, once they put it up and after they take it apart, then the sacrifices would not be acceptable and the Levium would not be sitting at the place that they're supposed to sit. So therefore, it's got to be done right away. Okay, the I mean, well, Your problem is there is, after all, a break, right? I mean, okay. Yeah. So it's obviously he must feel that like that's acceptable. That, for it's example, right. we are here uh, uh, doing... Uh, Minyan or uh, fire. So, the same way, we were praying Mincha and following Mari. Mari. The same thing. The, uh, without, without, breaking. And without breaking. Yeah. Well, but, but it's not, that's, we only do it because it's very convenient to get a Minyan. Most, yeah, yeah, most yeah, of the history, it's, it's you know, idea. we have Mincha and Because it's, the, the day is, is, is almost finished. Yeah, yeah. The old. I mean, obviously, Moshe himself was accustomed in those days, the seven days, to give the sacrifice of the daily sacrifice in the evening and um, lighting the, the, the menorah in the evening. So therefore, the Mishkan would have to be standing then, right, in the evening through the night. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to prove that this took place that way, that in the morning he took it down and put it up. Not what you might think, that he took it down in the evening. Okay. Okay. 
שם, אלא בתנחומה, אוקיי? אמר רבי חייא בר יוסף, כל שבעת ימי המלאים היה משה מפרקו ומעמידו שתי פעמים בכל יום. או, שנאמר תקים, and who come, רבי חייא אומר שלושה פעמים שנאמר תקים, who come, ויקם. וואו, אוקיי, okay. אוקיי, okay, now he's going to bring a different opinion coming up. That in one of these medrashim that is said, ראיתי, I saw, היה משה מעמידו מפרקו בכל יום שתי פעמים. There's an opinion that says that Moshe erected it and took it apart twice each day. Now why would you do that? Twice each day. Mm. Like maybe he would erect it in the morning in order to make the sacrifice. of the morning, and then he would take it down, and then he would erect it again for Bein Arbaim, for the afternoon sacrifice, and then, and then wait until the morning. I don't know, I don't, I don't understand. Two times. Okay, we'll see. And not only that, Rav Chanina HaGadol said three times every day. Shalosh HaPamim B'chol Yom. Shnei Amar, Takum Hukam Vayakem. They learn it from Psukim, where HaGad says he should put it up, and then he, it was put up, and then it was put up. So, three times from Sukim <coughs> suggests that maybe three times. Echad letamit sha'ah. What is it for? Echad letamit shal shachar. One time he erected it for the sacrifice of the morning. Ve'achad lamilu'im. And one time for the successful sacrifice of consecrating the Kohanim of the, for the day. Ve'achad letamit shal ben arbaim. For the afternoon sacrifice. And like I said, he would actually... deconstruct it after each one of these sacrifices and then come to the next time when the sacrifice was necessary put it up again put the sacrifice may do the sacrifice take it down wait until the next sacrifice in the afternoon put it up again and then maybe not take it down until the morning when he would put it up and take it down and put it up so now why that's a lot of practice okay yeah I mean, the Levium certainly got a lot of, a lot of uh, visual exercise right sounds. poor emotion What Poor he Moshe, you know what he yeah. had to do? I mean, <laughs> Moshe's doing all this work? Moshe's doing this, yeah. Demonstrating to them how to do it. I, mean, I suppose maybe he said, okay, you carry this and you carry that. Maybe he supervised, I don't know. V'yitachem. Shekol ze regilut lehodia inyan hakamato v'haseder velo yamidenu mefurak klau. Okay? The, these opinions that we had just now said in, is in order to tell you the repetition the way it was put up and the order in which it's put up, but not that it would remain deconstructed at all, right? Every time, every time it was necessary to do something, he would take it down and put it up. It wasn't like a, not like I thought, I'm sorry, right? Not like I thought that he would do the, mish, the, the sacrifice in the morning and then take it down. You do the sacrifice in the morning. Once it's up, It would stay until the Miluim are required. Then he would put it down and take it out for the Miluim. Then when it's time for the afternoon sacrifices, he would take it down and put it up. Right? It wouldn't be standing on, you know, without being constructed because remember we had a problem of the Liviim have to, having to remain at the opening of the Mishkan for 24 hours. Now you can't have the Mishkan down for two, three hours And then they don't have an opening of the Mishkan to stand. Mm -hmm. So in every case that he did, no matter how many times you want to say it, once or twice or three times in the day, it was uh, momentary, right? Down and up. Down and up twice, down and up once, down and up three times, but just down and up. No, no break of the, in between. Say there, so far? That's what the Ramban's opinion is so far, right? And... והכתוב שאמר כאן, ויחס הענן את אוהל מועד וכבוד השם מלא את המשכן, and this פסוק in our פרק right here about the climax, right? Mm -hmm. That Hashem's cloud comes down the and, and the honor of the משכן, of Hashem, comes filling the משכן, is, well, this פסוק, right, is the eighth day, right? ועל דעתם היה זה ביום השמיני, according to their opinion, that was the eighth day, correct? Mm -hmm. the Rosh Chodesh Nisan. Ki amar vayichal Moshe adam lacha, because Moshe completed the work, meaning completed the seven days the, into the eighth day of all the work that he was told to do. 
וכאשר קילה הקמה זו, when he finished completing this last erection of it, של אחד בניסן, on the first day of Nisan, כיסה הענן את המשכן, that's when the cloud of glory filled them, covered the משכן. Good. So that, until now we have quoted the opinion of the Chachamim, that he said, רבותינו אמרו. וכבר כתב רש"י, מה שדרשו, ויצאו ויברכו את העם לפי שכל שבעת ימי המלואים שהעמיד משה המשכן היה משמש בו ומפרקו ולא שרתה בו שכינה והיה ישראל נכלמים. Now, so, so now you have to see the drama, right? You have to see the drama. What's going on? Moshe got this instruction. He was told what to do. But the people, remember the people were told, God, Hashem has forgiven you. He's going to come and we are again going to make the Mishkan bring your contributions and come and do the work. And they do the work and they do the work and they're enthusiastic and Hashem has forgiven us. He's going to come down and he's going to be with us, right? So what they see on the morning of the 23rd of Adar, the first one, they see Moshe going in and they say, wow, we're going to make the Mishkan. He's putting it up. He's putting it up. Levi and Not only that, they're doing sacrifices every day. Three sacrifices, right? 23rd. And they look and say, oh, God is going to come down and show us that he is going to inhabit uh, the Mishkan in our midst. <laughs> Nothing happened. Mm-hmm. Moshe takes it apart again. He says, oh, there must be a problem. There must be a problem. Yes. Hashem, maybe Hashem didn't forgive us. Maybe Hashem is not satisfied with the work. Maybe Hashem mm-hmm. is not coming, right? And they watch him and they say, okay, he's doing it again. He must be trying harder to get God to come. So maybe three times in the first day or maybe each day, right? And they get up in the morning and they watch him at dawn. Maybe today God will come, right? Maybe. So they are ashamed, mm-hmm. right? They're embarrassed. Wait, 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 wait. Why don't you think that he told them? Why he doesn't he tell them? Yeah. This is only practice. Yeah. <laughs> there is no Vayakel except at the time when he instructed their construction, right? This is not Vayakel here. Here why, God why speaks to him. Mean, why he why doesn't he spread the word among the million and a half, two million, three million people that this is going on? I don't know. Why is she leaving them in a state of confusion? Like, they could close, they could close the good, good question. They could close the ego. Good question. <laughs> it's pretty painful, right? Pretty painful. It says, he could have sent out, you know, a, a YouTube or, a, you know, Google announcement to everybody saying, don't you worry, you know, this is only practice, and Hashem is not coming down, it's going to come later in the first day of the month. But apparently, according to the Ramban, there was a problem here, right? It was dramatic, the expectation of the people, and they are disappointed, right? Mm-hmm. You're, you're, it's a good question why they didn't tell them. And they were embarrassed. Mm-hmm. And they said to Moshe, you had told us to come and do all this work, you had to know all this contribution, I'm sorry, all this work, exclamation point, right? All this work that we did in order to bring the Shechina among us and to know that we were forgiven for the Egel? Exclamation mark, point, question mark, right? So they're complaining, they're wondering, what's going on, why? Amar lehem. So Moshe answers them, and he tells them, you know why this is now not happening? Aharon achi kedai v'chashu mimeni. My brother Aaron is more important than me, and therefore you see what I'm doing is not bringing the Shekhinah. But you will see when he is when in, charge. in charge, that's going to be the final. Right? Uh-huh. Now that, first of all, is a great humility on the part of Moshe. Yeah. He doesn't want them to think of him as the big guy, right? Mm-hmm. And remember, one of the things that's good about that in many ways is, after all, he's not going to be the one who's going to run the service in the Mishkan afterwards. Right? If he would be the one to bring down the, the great Shekhinah now, then after that, he's not the one who's going to run the service. It's going to be Aaron who's running the service. So people are saying, oh, you know, we had, we had the real climax that first time. Now Aaron is sort of like a stand-in. He's a substitute. It's not really... The greatest, right? So, so he didn't want that to be true. It's a matter of practice. Uh, why isn't uh, the person is going to be doing it? Maybe. Actually, sacrifice. Yeah. I don't know. He will demonstrate every day. Every day during this time, he was actually doing it. That's true. You're right. You're absolutely right. 
Uh, well, I suppose, you know, in medicine, uh, when you want to learn how to do an appendectomy, so the little students are around the table, and the one who does the surgery is the, is the big-time surgeon professor, right, sir? Right? He does it. He does it once. He does it twice. He does it three times. In this case, he does it seven times, or 21 times, right? And the students are looking, and after a while, he'll say to his best student, you know what I mean? Come over here and hold this for me, you know, and watch, you know what I mean? Get a little closer, right? And now I will hold this and you clip, you know? Mm -hmm. Everything is done in such a way that he is really responsible, and you get a little bit closer to understanding something. Mm -hmm. After that, at some point when he thinks he, you can deserve it, he will let you do it and he will watch, actually. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that didn't take place here. You know, after the seven time, after the seven days, Aram did the work. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll discuss it. I, that's very interesting. But anyway, so far, so he tells them, you know, Moshe. I Moshe said, I am not really capable as much as my brother. He's going to be the one who's going to bring the Shekinah. So don't worry, right? Number one. Was that was that true? Was that that, that is apparently the interpretation he wanted them to understand. But, but he wanted them to know that. Hashem didn't actually say that to him, right? He made that up to make them feel especially connected to Aaron. Second of all, the, another good reason for it is, remember, Aaron was one of the people who was actually involved in the Chet Ha'ega. Right? Mm -hmm. Maybe he's the one that's ashamed. Well, they also might think, you know what I mean, Aaron is in deep trouble just like we are. So Hashem is going to have to forgive him also. So, you know, that's why it's, you know, that's why we need Moshe to do it rather than him. Right? Because how could you have somebody who cooperated with the mm -hmm. crime to do the real one who's bringing down the Shekhinah? So, as a matter of fact, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Right? That Hashem wanted it that way in order to show them that they were completely forgiven mm -hmm. and that Aaron is especially because also received. There, yeah. But Moshe, that's right, because, but Moshe here wants to make sure that they understand that, right? So he tells them, not me, it's not me. So therefore, don't think that you're not being forgiven. It's because I am not yet capable of doing this. I'm just helping them to learn. And then the real thing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, right. Okay. Uveparshat miluim, yachol hukama mishkan berosh chodesh veshartash china bashmini lachodesh. Now, he all of a sudden he's switching gears, the Ramban, and he's saying, you know, it's not necessarily true what I just told you until now. <laughs> Maybe it is possible, right, Pinky? It is possible that the first day of these eight days is actually now in Rosh Chodesh. And you know when the Shekhinah actually came? The eighth day of Nisan. So this commandment of Hashem telling him, I want you to put it up on the day one of the first month, is the actually first day of those eight days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unlike what they said, we said. Unlike what, he changed the gears. Yeah. Right. Complete, right? Yahol. It's possible that it was that way. He's saying now, what's the difference? Why is it so important? We'll see in a minute. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out, okay? Um, uh, Yahol, right? It's possible that it happened that way. Um, 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 I'm trying to find out. Yeah. Talmud Lomar, is the Right? On that day, the eighth day, the Shekhinah actually comes down. It is through the deeds of Aharon. he so says, you sense. might think, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There were seven and days before. He's, he didn't change gears. He didn't change gears at all. No, no. In Parshat Miluim, which is, uh, which is Torah's Kohanim, Shmini, right? Some people think that maybe this 
is the eighth day of Nisan rather than the first day of Nisan after the end. So it cannot be because it says that the day of the, uh, the erection of the Mishkan, which was the beginning of Nisan, uh, the, the, uh, the tabernacle was filled with the Shekhinah, and that was through Aaron's deeds, and therefore it was the end of the eighth days, not the beginning. It was the eighth day of the Miluim when the Shechina came. Vehu echad benisan, and that was echad benisan, not not the eighth. Okay. Im kain tihe kol aparsha azot ledat tam biyom hashmini. Right. All of this discussion is on the eighth day of the month, on the eighth day of the Miluim, which is the first day of Nisan. Yeah. So far, so good. The last day Aaron did it. On the on the final day, Aaron did it. But he said that. The the the, uh, the rabbis are clearly saying that the cloud covering the tabernacle was on the eighth day of the installation of the installation of the installation yes which was not, on the first day of, of the Nisan. Month. yes so like we said started so on the twenty third started on the twenty third and on the eighth day yes nachon in Adar like we all like all along all along yeah amishkan Ki Moshe Asakain, the Ki Light Kolam Alacha. The Az Ki Sain Anita Oil, right? It's the seventh day. The Chalotah, the Yom Shetia Kamata Mishkan, the Chalotah, to finish it on the first day of Nisan. And Ki Moshe Asakain, and Moshe did this and completed all the work. And then the Anan filled the Ohel. No, that's, that's so so what happened to what happened to Aaron again? The Chain Tamid. The Chazara Kadu al Khilata Dibura Shiraya Le Moshe mi mina oil by Marvi Kray Moshe. The Kolzel Besay to Nachon. Is he I'm getting confused about whether it was the completion of this work by Moshe or the completion of this work by He's going to maybe explain. There's, a, there's coming up another piece here. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so, so let's wait a second. Maybe he'll clear this up. I'm getting a little confused. Ukidmut araya lahem. Lahem. The question is which day what what ha, who brought the mishkan who brought the the, uh, the the shekhinah is it when moshe completed the work one day after the other or is it when aharon did work on the final day i don't know and they want these people who say that it was moshe they want to bring a proof it says when Moshe completed the work it means when Moshe completed the work that means Moshe is the one who brought the Mishkan who brought the Anana Kavot, right? and if he did not oh now they're talking about a different kind of proof proof of the fact that he would disassemble it every day if he didn't actually disassemble it, then what do you mean chalot? Ki bayom echad echel v'kila farauish shiyomar v'yim bayom akim Moshe et ha-mishkan. So, uh, what, what, what are the two possibilities? The Aaron took over on the eighth day or the ninth day? Ninth day? I don't know what they're saying. The last day. Whatever the last day is, the eighth day, did Moshe do the work or did Aaron do the work? Did, I, did Aaron do it? One Pasuk says, Moshe completed the work, right? So if it, see, it seems to say when Moshe completed the work, it seems like that's when the, uh, when the Anan came. Yeah, so he said... Right? He said so it isn't, it isn't Aaron. So he finished and he put him in, in, in charge from the same very day, eight days. Shamar Sham Zerakatu Atavar Shem Sivan Shem Tatsu Vayakor Shem Lahan. 
משמעות זה שעדיין לא כיסנה את האור המועד, ולא מילא כבוד השם את המשכן. ובכל מקום, ביום הראשון של מועד, נדבר, נדבר למשה, משם כל פרשיות הנאמרות בתחילת ספר ויקרא, עד ויהי ביום השמיני. אבל לא היה עיניים מכסה אותו, והיה סבורים, היו סבורים, שהיה דיבור למשה שם מן השמיים, כאשר היה בארץ מצרים. So there's a lot of there's a lot of communication between Moshe and the Kadosh Baruch Hu. He's saying, right? If you look at the Torah, this Pude starts a lot of parshiot with many instructions about what's going to happen in the Mishkan, what kind of sacrifices come, and so on and so on. And we don't actually have the climax of Hashem coming to fill the Mishkan until Parshat Shmini, which is several pages of Torah yet to come, right? So because it says, and Hashem says, and Moshe comes and says to the people, this is what you should do, and Hashem will come and appear to you and come to the Mishkan. Right? Uh, so, so what, all this, all this discussion, all this discussion that we're talking about now is just between Moshe and uh, Hashem. And there is no, and there is no cloud covering the Mishkan, right? All this discussion that we're now talking about is before everything. So, are you swearing Shayan the Gula Moshe Shem Sham Min Hashemayim Kasher Yaberetz Mitzrayim? So everybody feels that Moshe is speaking to Hashem like from the heavens, without the Mish, without the tabernacle, right? Um. Even though the tabernacle may be up and down and up and down, but Hashem is speaking to Moshe outside of the Mishkan. Not through the Mishkan, because the Kavoda Shekhinah is not dead there. What, what, is, what is bothering him? What's the problem? You, you see where we're up to so far? Be trying, right? How do you get there? Third line. How do you get there? I just read Aval, but so so far we have. What do we have? We have. We have the twenty third day of twenty third day of Adar. Moshe gets instructions. He goes up and down and up and down and up and down. Then, when he's finally given the final instructions to put up the Mishkan in this parsha, the first day of the month, he mean we mean to say the eighth day of the Milwim, the eighth day of the practice. Right. And Moshe is being the one who's told to do it, right? And then when Moshe completed the work, that's when the Anan comes. So it sounds like Moshe did, brought the Mishkan, brought the Shekhinah down, right? I mean, that's what it sounds like, right? Aaron, is, Aaron maybe enters the Mishkan afterwards, but I, yeah, I mean, I don't know. But in Shmini, it sounds like Aaron went in, And so his opinion so far is that it took place eight days in a row. Where is it? Where is the, uh, when Hashem tells him, Moshe tells them, this is what you should do, and, everybody, and uh, Hashem will come. Which, which? What? No, it can't be. Well, really? In Shmini, I thought it is. No? Shmini. Yeah. Hashem. No, here it is. Moshe calls Aaron and his sons and all the elders. Tells him to bring a special sacrifice and so on and so on. And the people should bring a special sacrifice. And, and Moshe said, Pasuk Bav, in Perek Tet of Vayikra. And Moshe says, This is what God said you should do. And the glory of God will be, will be appear to you. You come to the Mizbeach, do your sacrifice, and so on and so on and so on for you and for the people. And Aaron goes and does it. Right? So it sounds like this is Moshe's Mishkan, which he erected that morning. Right? I think he, 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 he erected did, it up. He erected it that morning because he tells them what to do in the sacrifices. He didn't tell them to put it up. 
He says, and this is what you should do to bring Hashem down. So he erected it that morning. And then he tells Aro, and he tells the people, this now is going to work. Everybody should know. This is what we're going to do, and Hashem will come to us. And he tells Aro, go and do this sacrifice, and do that sacrifice, and bring the sacrifice for the people, and for you, and for you, and for you, and so on. And the Shekhinah will come. Right? We know that the Shekhinah, he went and did the sacrifices, and the Shekhinah didn't yet come. And Aaron was frightened that maybe something was wrong, right? Because he saw, there's a medrash, and he saw the shape of a lion or something, you know, you know, accusing him of still the Egel stuff that maybe Hashem didn't forgive me. So he went out to Moshe and he says, what am I going to do? You just made me embarrassed. So Moshe says, okay, let's go in together. And they go in together. You know that uh, medrash, right? They go in together and they pray. And the Mishkan is filled with the, uh, Hashem sends a fire down and consumes the sacrifice. And the people go crazy, you know, and, and uh, raise up a, a applause. And Moshe comes out with Aaron, and Aaron blesses the people. Right? So that's climax. Sounds like Moshe erected the Mishkan this final time on the eighth day. And then it's not taken down anymore. Right? Unless mm-hmm. Hashem, unless unless Hashem, unless Hashem yeah. travels. Yeah. Right? Okay, so, so what's the problem? Why, why are we troubled here? אבל במדרש חזית מצאתי, ויהי ביום השמיני זה היה ראוי להיות תחילת הספר. ולמה נכתב כאן? אלא שאין מוקדם מאוחר בתורה. אם כן יהיה ויקרא אל משה מאוהל מועד, אחר וירא כבוד השם אל כל העם, ותצא איש ותאכל את המזבח, ויהי הדיבור לאהרון יין שבשיכר על תשמע ומחרת, כי לא ייתכן שנדבר לאהרון מאוהל מועד. קודם למשה, ואיני יודע אם זה דברי הכל או הם דברי יחיד, כי על דברי רבי ישמעאל נאמרו שם. אה, you see, there's a problem. After our parsha, we say, we say, Hashem told him on this day to put up the Mishkan, right? Mm-hmm. And we're saying this is day one of Shemini, right? Mm-hmm. Day one of Shemini, we're uh, saying. And not Chav Gimel, right? Then right after this parsha, it says in Vayikra, Vayikra Hashem el Moshe miyom moed. Hashem calls out to Moshe from Oel Moed. Well, if this the Oel Moed is not yet up until the eighth day, and we are just now talking about the seven days going on, so when does Hashem speak to him from Oel Moed? There's no speaking to Moshe from Oel Moed yet, when the Shekhinah is not yet there in Oel Moed. So, he says that, that, doesn't, that doesn't compute. Right. So according to them, you have to say that Vayikra, until Shmini, is out of place, right? Out of place. First, there is putting up the Mishkan, and Aaron comes in to do the sacrifices that Moshe instructs him. Ma, uh, the, the, uh, the Mishkan is filled with the Shechina. And then Moshe speaks to Hashem from Oel Moed. Moshe speaks to, uh, to Moshe, Hashem speaks to Moshe from Oel Moed that after the consecration, which is after Shemini, and gives him all the instructions about the sacrifices for the year and everybody's Yom Tovim and uh, Chatat and Tamid and so on, right? Mm-hmm. They would say, Right. They, the Medrash Chazit, right? He tells me, he, this is where he saw someone, Medrash Chazit 62. Mm-hmm. It's, Lo Matzati Ma Marzen Medrash Shira Shirim, Eleva Kohelet Rabba. He's saying it's Kohelet Rabba, not in Shira Shirim, but in Kohelet Rabba. There's a, there's a Medrash. So. Yes, he had no found in Shira Shirim, but in. But, but it's, uh, again, it's in a different Medrash, right? But it is, right? So the Shemini, that eighth day, should be really the beginning of Vayikra because it takes place first. First, the Shechina comes to the Mishkan. Then he speaks to Moshe from the Mishkan, right? So they would say that Shemini should start the book and Vayikra come after it. Why is it written that way? Well, you know, ain't Muktam Bukhar. You know, sometimes they, they, they claim this uh, liberty of saying that there are portions of the Torah that are written not in order. In order. Chronological. Of chronological order. There's an order of some kind, 
for some message, but right. The Ramban doesn't like that kind of stuff, you understand? Yeah. He says whenever there's going to be a mukdam of Ruchar that is out of order, you have to have a very good reason yeah. why the Torah would do it. Yes. Not that we figure it must be that way, mm -hmm. but why would the Torah write it that way if that's the case? Mm -hmm. So you would have to figure out why, why would the Torah be dictated to Moshe this way, out of order, for this to be described before the Mishkan actually gets consecrated, mm -hmm. for Hashem to speak to him from the Mishkan. I mean, right? With all those instructions about sacrifice, before the Mishkan is even consecrated, during the eight days of practice. I mean, what's the... Yeah? Right? It would be strange. Seven days of practice, or eight days of practice. Seven days of practice. Oh. Well, seven days of practice when he would take it down every day. On the eighth day, it was also, I suppose, practice because he put it up in the morning, but he would not take it down anymore. Mm -hmm. That was it. On the eighth day. Who did the avoda? And the eighth day, Aaron goes in to do the avoda. That's what, I, that's what he said. And Moshe told him, this is what uh, you shall do, and Hashem will come and occupy the Mishnah. And that's what he wanted the people to see, that all those days that were not brought through the Mishkan, it was him, Moshe, and when it is brought, it's Aaron. That's what his purpose was. I mean, that's one of the lessons they would learn. But that, mean, that means that in these seven days, in this period of time, Hashem didn't speak to Moshe. Or maybe... Uh, well... Hashem could speak to Moshe without the Mishkan. Yeah. Remember, there's an oil. There's an oil. I, he himself had a tent. Remember, way back when, after the Torah was given and the Egel, he had his tent outside of the camp, and he would go there, and Hashem would speak to him there. Hashem could speak to Moshe without the Oil no aid. Uh, he spoke to him in Mitzrayim. Right. So, so there's no there's no problem in terms of communicating. On that last day, on that last no, day, the eighth he said, day, there he were said that son, the, Hashem spoke to him and said, the, uh, the on this day you shall day, put it up. He spoke, Hashem called Moshe, so that means that he's talking about the eighth day, so that means that in seven days he didn't, speak to him. He didn't speak to him. No, 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 the, the Ramban also said that earlier on there is a uh, instructions for him how he shall put up the tent when he was first given the instructions of what the kalim were and how to make the aron and how much to bring truma from the people, those were talks to Moshe from God, right, all along. Mm -hmm. When they were finished, the problem is when they were finished doing all the work, when did Hashem tell him, okay, today is the day when you put it up? So you might think, that when Hashem says, okay, today's the day that you put it up, means the first day of the practice. Put it, that's the first time you put it up. Right? But he took it down and put it up and took it down and put it up. Uh, the Ramban and the Chachamim say, no, that's not true. Un Moshe understood that you put it up and take it down and put it up and take it down for, for the Levian to learn. When God said to him on day one of Nisan, today you put up the Mishkan, Erect the Mishkan. He meant to say a final time you put it up and you leave it up. Yeah, and, and, and that's it. And that's it. And that is the eighth day of the practice sessions. And that is the day that he put it up in the morning. Moshe did put it up in the morning. And instructed Aaron to start doing the work in it. Until then, the seven days, Aaron did not do the work in it. In the morning Moshe it puts it up and Moshe does the sacrifices. In the morning means... Of the eighth day. Morning of yeah, Rosh Nisan. What time? At dawn. Before dawn. Before the, before the sacrifice is brought. The first sacrifice is brought. Like uh, 5 a.m.? At dawn. Yeah, when, the, when, the, when the first uh, little light comes over the horizon of the, of the east. Yeah, because sometimes we, we understand that in the morning means that starting the day uh, means the night in the light. Yeah. So... No, no, no. Even in the morning. Morning, morning. All right. Remember, because every day, according to the Ramban, every day 
the, the Mishkan stood 24 hours. In the morning, at dawn, he would take it apart and put it up. That's what he did the last day. Morning, it was standing all, all, all night. All night, yeah. Remember? It was always standing. And well, it had to be at the one, opening two, all the time. Three, all four, through the days. Uh, 5 a.m. 5 a.m. As soon as dawn comes, whatever the day is, could be 4.52. And he would go, as soon as he would see the dawn, take it down, and put it up. Put it up yeah. On this eighth day, put it up and left it up. And he told, he told Aram, okay, now these are the sacrifices that you bring. And he told the people, bring your sacrifices. And now Hashem is going to come down yeah. and Aram does the work in I Turkey. Understand. I think I remember seeing something that, um, where it says, before Hashem relates to Mishkan. Um, yeah? That was not a time, it was not a time for communication with Moshe. No, that's right. right. It's not. Right. Moshe has to leave the tent. And the Anan covers the Mishkan in such a way that nobody can come in. Mm -hmm. Including including Moshe and Aaron. That takes place after the sacrifices are brought that day. Moshe and Aaron, in the morning, he erects it. He tells Aaron what service to bring. And he tells Aaron and the people, this is what's going to be done, and Hashem will fill the Mishkan. He does the service mm -hmm. of the sacrifices, mm -hmm. Aaron. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as a sign that Hashem has accepted it and comes into Mishkan, the fire consumes the uh, the uh, and the, the sacrifice, and the cloud fills the covers the Mishkan, and the glory of God fills the Mishkan, and everyone cannot approach, mm -hmm. like like Har Sinai. Mm -hmm. well, so then, sort of. Neither right? Moshe. There was Moshe. And then the question is, what does Moshe do then at that point? Does he enter that cloud, or can he not enter a cloud? This is the next Ramban, by the way, yeah. which we... Uh, There are many details left out of this one. This is not the one yet, right? And then, 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 then. Vaya. Here, this one, Yud Zayin. Uh, no, no. Yes, yes, we might as well do that, right? Yud Zayin, since this we're talking about the first day of the month, right? It will not, this is the day when it was put up in order to stand that. Stand. And all of a sudden, they're, they're, they're describing what he did from the first day of, the, of, the, of Adar, Chav Gimel. And he didn't tell him now, don't. to 34. Oh, 34. Now, all of a sudden, we're skipping, according to the Ramban, this Pasuk Lamed 34, chapter 40, verse 34, is actually a skip to Shmini. To Parashat Shmini. the cloud covered the town of Midian. Right? The cloud covered the town the tent of meeting. Now, we have said until now that ah, uh, the Ramban does not like Mugdam and Mulukhar. Right? Pinky. Yes. Well, this is startling, no? Here it is in chapter four, 40, before Shmini, before the end of our book of, of Shmot, right? Mm -hmm. 
the description of the cloud covering the Eloi. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that this discussion is talking about the eighth day of the practice, which is the first day of Nisan, mm -hmm. right? Which is the final climax of all the things being done. Correct? And, and what are we talking about Shemini later on is the same, is this point, is this event. So what happened to the... And, and when Hashem speaks to Moshe in the next parsha by Yikra, it comes from this Mishkan after the Hashra'at Shekhinah, after the Shekhinah comes. So there's no Mugdam Mubukhar Torah there. But if all of this is good, why is the parsha Shemini pushed off till after all of this? Mm -hmm. It should be right here, no? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. But, How come it isn't put in right in here? Yes. Shmini, the climax, there. Does it teach um, um, halachas of Kabbalas? Yeah, of course, but so what? Yeah, I mean, no, but why didn't... He does all these things, and then it's a, it, it looks like this is the climax of the end of the eighth day, right? The end of the eighth, the actual day is eight, day eight. So, why was it, why was it passage here? Here, yeah. That, that, well, that's what he says. I mean, that's what he tells them. That this is now Hashem is going to come. Mm -hmm. It sounds like he doesn't like Muktam and Mukhar, but here it, it seems to be broken, no? Well, he said... Well, Maybe he doesn't want to mention the negative aspects of what happened with the sons of Aaron. So we don't want to go into details like that, so he leaves it out here. And uh, I mean, I, I don't know, you know, right? I mean, in Shmini, it's described how Aaron actually did the service, which precedes the Anan coming down. So what, what happened uh, right? Am I right? I mean... Yeah, because here it's, it's clear that the, the, the Anan came and... and Shekinah covered all the, the ten of them. And the glory of the eternal filled the tabernacle. So. Maybe, maybe. Is it possible that the Mish, that the Shechina comes now, and in Shmini, what happens there in Shmini? He dresses them. He does everything, and 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 where's the climax? And he does, and he does, and he consecrates the the Kohanim, and. He tells him what they're going to do, and Hashem is going to come, right? And then, and then he makes the Mishkan, he makes the sacrifices, Aaron does, and he comes out from doing the sacrifices and he blesses the people. And Moshe and Aaron go in together. And they come out, and the kavod of Hashem appears to the people. Doesn't say anything about a cloud. Fatetzeish, and then a fire comes down and eats the mizbeach, and all the people applaud. So maybe, maybe the two different events. Is it possible? That day, the eighth day, it could be two different things happened. I mean, Moshe erects the Mishkan, and here it says that there's no fire, and there's no sacrifice, but a cloud covers the Mishkan. What's our pasuk of uh, Mem uh, Lamed Dalet? Mem Lamed, maybe this is the reason. Mem Lamed Dalet says, 
When he finishes erecting, doesn't say anything about a sacrifice, right? Mm-hmm. He completed doing this. Moshe completes the work, which sounds like the work, right? And a cloud covers the Mishkan. What, what word and are you talking about there? Pasuk Mem Lamed Dalet. What are you... What, what the work of putting it up. Putting it up. Masach Shari Chatzir. Vayakam El Chatzir, Savi Lo Mishkan, that Pasuk, right? Vayichal Moshe Adam Lacha. Okay? And then, this last day, this last day, the eighth day, and he's going to leave it up, right? He completes it, and the Anan covers the Mishkan, and the, and the glory of God fills it, and Moshe cannot enter, and when the Anan goes up, that's when they would travel. From now on, that's the way it would be, right? Okay. Then, Vayikra, the very next thing is Vayikra Hashem speaks to Moshe from this Ohel mm-hmm. and tells him all the laws of the sacrifices, mm-hmm. right? And then that same day, that same day, Moshe calls Aaron and says, okay, the Mishkan has been occupied by the Shekhinah. Now you go and do the sacrifices so that God will appear to the people. He doesn't say anything about the Aldan. He says, this is what you do with these sacrifices on Shemini, which is this day, in the, after, in the, in the morning, whatever, right after this, mm-hmm. right? Hashem first tells him all the halachot, then he calls them people. I'm, I'm trying to make it according to the Ramban, a continuous thing without any break, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Two different things happen. First, the Anan covers, right? Doesn't say anything about fire, doesn't say anything about a sacrifice, correct? He finishes completing the Mishkan, this last time, the Anan HaKavod comes, and it fills the glory of, of the Mishkan is filled. Cannot enter. Hashem then calls him and speaks to him from there and says to him, these are the sacrificial laws and the holiday laws and everything else, right? Then, on that same day, Yom HaShmini, Moshe calls the people and says to them, this is what you will do today and the glory of God will appear to you. Now, of course, the Anan sounds like it was already done, but that's a problem, right? The glory of God, how will he appear? We will tell you. We will, the, the Torah tells you how it will appear to you. He tells to Aaron, this is what you do. You come in, you do this sacrifice and that sacrifice and this sacrifice and that sacrifice. And Aaron does it. And he comes out and blesses the people when he finishes. No fire, nothing happened yet. Blesses the people. And then Moshe and Aaron go together, which according to the Medrash means to pray once more that please they should, Hashem should show the people. And then they come out. They come out and they bless the people and a fire comes down from heaven, which didn't happen here in our parasha, mm-hmm. consumes, the, consumes the sacrifice, and the people see that, and they applaud, and they celebrate. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't have to be a contradiction in order, right. according to the Ramban. Right. Because there's no Muktam and Bukhar. You know, those people who said that this Vayikra happened before, and then again, you know, and the Shmini is now but then it skips to the Shemini later. That's a problem for them, he says. Well, so they're not worried about Mikdon Luchar, but he is. So there's two different events. There's two different events, right? Can we get away with this? I mean, I... I, I 23rd of Adar, Moshe knows that he's supposed to do this practice sessions. Yes. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Hashem comes to him on the eighth day, which is the first day of Nisan, and tells him, today you put it up and leave it up. Mm-hmm. Moshe does it. Da, 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 da. He completes the doing of it, and the cloud covers the Mishkan, and he's unable to approach. Right? Mm-hmm. No sacrifice. Aaron did not bring a sacrifice that morning yet. This is early morning. He completed the putting it up. Moshe is then called from the tent, which he cannot enter, right? From the tent, where you call El Mi Olimoe, right? Moshe is called Vaikrash El Moshe Vaidaberilav, Me O El Moed Lemor, right? He Moshe is heard the voice of God speaking to him from Oil Moed. He's outside in front, right? And 
he tells him all the laws that follow in Vayikra until Parshat Shemini, when Hashem gives him all those instructions. On that same day, Moshe calls Aaron and he says, maybe this is 15 minutes. Who knows how long it took Moshe to absorb those instructions, right? It's still morning, and it's time for Aaron to start the sacrifices. He calls him in, tells the people, this is what we're going to do, and Hashem is going to appear to you. We didn't say anything about Anan, right? Appear to you. And what happens is, with a sequence of events of the sacrifices, Hashem appears to the people by this fire that consumes the... I mean, that's what Shemini says, right? By Yerayla Ela Hashem Elam. Right? Right? By Yerayla Hashem Right? Oh, Hashem sounds like it's whatever it is, because that's not as, that's not identical with what happens right there. Um, whatever Hashem took place then after our own sacrifice. And what happened about the Anan was when Moshe erected it in the morning. This is all on the same day, Shmini, according to the Ramban. So there's no problem of continuity. All you have to do is say that Vayikra, those laws of Vayikra before Shmini, happen after he erects it, and Hashem speaks to him and tells him all these things he wants to tell him, and then he goes to Aaron. That's a lot of things happening, right? And then he goes to Aaron and tells him to start the work of the eighth day. Mm -hmm. This all happened that day. I suppose that works. I mean, what time is it? 9.35. Gewalt. Very busy. Mm -hmm. When did the... Very busy. The Ramban quotes an opinion that says that this day of the first day of Nisan was actually day one of the practice. And that all that happens until the eighth day of Nisan. Mm -hmm and all kinds of other things, right, uh, that take place. And according to them, Vayikra and all of the discussions with Moshe have to be, has to be chopped out of the beginning of the book of Vayikra and put after Shmini. Because Shmini is the actual the eighth day, and what we're talking about now is day one. So, I mean, uh, it's a problem, according to them. But according to the Ramban, he, our only problem is that and well, it's it's not the Ramban's problem. It's the Torah. It's the looking at the text. If we look at the text, we've got a problem, which we just now discovered. Moshe's climax in our parsha is a cloud, and the quote Hashem filling the Mishkan says nothing about fire, and it says nothing about the people seeing the kavod of Hashem. Our parsha, right? Period. Then Shmini comes, and the account of Shmini is sacrifices, and the people assembled, seeing Kvod Hashem, and a fire coming down, and they applaud. So, if that's two different accounts about the climax of the Mishkan, according to the Ramban, according to the way we're seeing it, there are two climaxes of that day. The Moshe completes the work, mm -hmm. and the cloud comes. Aaron is instructed in the sacrifices and the glory of God is seen, whatever that means, like and a fire comes down. Yeah. And they applaud. Two different parts of that day. I mean, mm -hmm. and two different climaxes. What is it? What do they mean? I, I mean Moshe already knows that the, that the cloud covered the Mishkan and the glory of God fills the Mishkan and he cannot enter. So that's already there. And then he says to the people, this is what you should do, and the glory of God will be seen to you, will be revealed to you. What does he mean by that? What, what is missing? What's missing is Aaron doing the sacrifices, and, and then the people... So what is it? Moshe sees the cloud, but the people don't see the cloud? Pinky? Mm -hmm. Huh? I mean, so they are not yet aware, right? They are not yet ro'im et kvod Hashem, that he told them. But our Parsha says the cloud comes. 
So the cloud, whatever Anan Hashem, is not visible to them. Otherwise, they would celebrate already, right? I mean, this is this is the climax, no? Well, clouds of heaven are coming after our own that is the No. Didn't say that. Our Pasha says by Echal Moshe. He puts up the Masach, he puts up the curtain of the Chatzir, by Echal Moshe Sasotadam Lacha, by Chas Anan et Hamishkan. Veloyachol Moshe Lavo. Right there. But if you see the Anan come down, so you 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 get excited. You would see you would think so, right? Yes. Moshe cannot even enter, right? I mean it's a it's an awesome thing. So Unless you say it's invisible, right? To everybody else, it's just Moshe who can't come. I, listen, I'm not the I'm not the one who's responsible for this, but there are two things going on. Yes, we 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 have one account saying Moshe cannot now enter because it's Anan, mm-hmm. and yet the sacrifices of the day with Aaron has not yet taken place, and the description of that, which is on the same day, includes the people seeing, no clouds mentioned, the people seeing Kvod Hashem. And the fire coming down, and that's when they climax. That's the climax for the people. Mm-hmm. So we have to figure out what is the first climax. If the big climax for the people is the second one, what's the first one? The Anan coming. Anan, our parsha ends. Yeah, that was me. Our parsha ends. Vayichas vayichal Moshe laasot et amacha et amacha vayichas. Vayakem et hachatzer saviv la mishkan vila mizbeach vayitan et masach vayitain et masach shari hachatzer. Moshe. Vayichal Moshe et amlacha. Moshe completes the work. Vayichas he'anan et oel moed ukvod Hashem male et hamishkan velo yachol Moshe lavo el oel moed ki shachan ala ve'anan ukvod Hashem male et hamishkan. That took place right now when he finished the work. So... And remember, there's no Mukdam or Mukhar. The Rambana doesn't like that kind of stuff. So the, something happens now. Later on, something else happens on, sh- on that day. <coughs> Two different... Um, Moshe is getting uh, replaced here. By his, by his command, yeah. Yes. He tells Aaron, you're taking over. And he told the people, you know, I couldn't bring the the Shechina. I mean, it's uh, Aaron. He's the one who's Ra'ui. He's better than me. Uh, going to the Medrash, right? Okay. And God wants that. I mean, uh, you know, when, when Aaron thinks like he's failed when he comes out the first time, so he says to Moshe, I feel terrible. He says, why do you feel terrible? He says, because maybe Hashem is, finds me unworthy. So Moshe says, that's exactly why you were chosen, because you always feel like you're unworthy, mm-hmm. right? That's exactly why you are chosen. But anyway, okay, we, we, we have to certainly, we've talked about that, why it was important for Aaron to be the one seen by the people better than Moshe for the sacrifices. Fine. Mm-hmm. Because remember, if Moshe is like the almost godlike figure, once Moshe dies, then what happens? But if Aaron is the one, remember Aaron is the lineage, right? His son after him will be consecrated. Lazar goes up when he dies and he comes down with his clothing and they continue. So there will always be a Kohen Gadol. That's the transmission that will be in the Mishkan. Cannot be the leader Moshe who does this, right? It's got to be passed into an ongoing national event, right? Okay. But, but, we're, we're getting off the topic. The topic that we have is, I don't know to figure it, but there is something happens to Mo, with Moshe's completion, and then there is another thing that happens with Aaron's completion of the sacrifices. Right? That's clear. Right. And they both happen on the eighth day. Mm-hmm. First day on the second. the Ramban. And when Moshe gets spoken to from the Oel Moed, it's after the Shekinah comes in Vayikra, after the Shekinah comes it's there for the cloud, for the cloud, for the cloud, but the people yet have not seen the glory of God, whatever, by Yerayel Hashem Kod Hashem, Kod Hashem. Whoa. 
you know, Pinky, look at me. I'm, I'm often wondering when your head is down whether you are sleeping or whether you're I'm looking, whether you're listening. listening. You are listening? You're having trouble. Yeah. So, so listen, listen, one more thing. One more thing. One last thing. Well, one last thing. Are you ready? The cloud, just thought of that, maybe. The cloud, if you remember, is synonymous, symbolic, of the cloud that covered Har Sinai. Right. Yeah. The cloud that covered Har Sinai is the cloud that covers the Mishkan. Moshe, the Ramban talks about that. Yes. And, and when the cloud covered Har Sinai, Moshe, that was, Moshe was up there. that was, no, the first cloud, first cloud covered. Then Moshe was called up to the cloud, and he went mm -hmm. into the Arafel he where, God, where he God waited. was. He waited. Yeah. He could go in then. And he Hashem was called. Hashem called him. Uh -oh. He could not go first. Yes. Could yes. not go first, Be because like everybody else, he was he couldn't go. Hashem told him, "Come on up, Alei Lahar, Alei Lahar, Vayal Moshe Arafel Asher Shama Elokim." Right. So Hashem calls him in. So I'm just thinking to myself: the climax is Matan Torah. After Moshe went up, 